This podcast is sponsored by Lightens. Lightens, your best source for OE quality automotive and heavy duty accessory drive tensioning devices. We know tensioners because we invented them. Charles, welcome to AMN Drive Time, sponsored by Lightens. Great to have you with us today. Oh, thank you, Bill. It's great to be with you. So, Charles, you've been in the aftermarket for quite some time. You can tell us the exact numbers of years if you want. Tell us a little bit about your, your background. Uh, yeah, um, first of all, Bill, I grew up in Niagara Falls, New York, and upstate. Uh, I still call Niagara Falls home, the honeymoon city. After graduating high school there, I did my studies at Northwood University. After graduating from North University, I started my career with Tenneco as a territory sales manager. After managing several challenging territories, mainly on the East Coast, I was promoted to national account manager, and that gave me my first exposure into corporate headquarters. After only two years as a national account manager, I took on the role as sales director. And then, as you know, Tenneco combined the two organizations, Walk and Monroe, and I was named executive sales director for both those groups. Over the years, I've taken on many management responsibilities with companies like TMD Friction, FTE Automotive, ASC Airtex, prior to joining NTN. And now I'm proud to be a member of this uh, strong aftermarket team here at NTN. Charles, recently you were uh, elevated NTN to the role of Vice President of Automotive Aftermarket from your previous position of, uh, of Director of Sales. Why don't you share with me and our AMM audience about what it what makes a great salesman uh, in the automotive aftermarket today, in your opinion? Well, Bill, as you know, the industry has evolved over the years, and it's pretty difficult just to survive as a salesperson in the autom automotive aftermarket. I believe today's salesperson not only needs to sell the product, then they must also be able to manage the product throughout the different channels, and that's through the different levels of distributions with the customer as well on a daily basis. It's gotten, become very complex out there in the market. Uh, even though you have to be a good sales rate, but nowadays you need to be a good manager as well. And being, being a longtime aftermarket salesperson, Charles, I'm sure you've done quite a bit of traveling over your many years. Any memorable or funny stories uh, that come to mind from years on the road, whether at a trade show or a dinner or at an account or a tour or something that went on? Yeah, there's, a, there's several. Some uh, I probably shouldn't share publicly, not to embarrass the, the players that were involved, but uh, one I always kind of chuckle about sometimes when I'm sitting around in the evening just thinking about the past is uh, it was several years ago I was a young territory sales manager and back in those days, we did the changeovers, the physical changeovers, and I was working for Walker Exhaust, which is it's pretty tough to do those changeovers, very physical work. Uh, I mean, you go out and you sweat and do it. It was way in the, in, south, uh, in the southern part of Virginia. It was about a five-mile car drive. So my colleague and I from Baltimore, Maryland, drove down to do this changeover on a Sunday because that's the only time the customer would let us do the changeover. And as you know, when you're changing over exhaust, it's a lot of physical work, a lot of rack building, uh, and a lot, of, a lot of different effort put into it. And he wanted it done in his attic. And so we work uh, all day sweating, taking water breaks, get everything set up uh, for this particular customer uh, up in his attic. We're very proud of our work. We're downstairs going over the paperwork with him. And we hear a little small noise, like a little ping. And then that team became a little louder. And then it became this big bang. And all the racking and all our work and everything else had given way up in the attic and collapsed. And we had this entanglement of all this exhaust. And I looked over at my colleague. He, to this day, he denies it. He said it was sweat. But I could see a tear dripping down the side <laughs> of his eye uh, after that happened. But Which means, okay, now it's an overnight stay because it was going to take quite a bit of work to get that clean up. So we've had, got, had, I've got many stories that's happened in the past like that. What a great story. Did, did you keep the business? Oh, yes, we kept the business. He was very pleased when, after we, we reinstalled it for him. Uh, we did make some adjustments with the racking that uh, he didn't want to commit the monies to, but afterwards he did. Terrific. So, Charles, as you know, we're in a time of great change in the industry today. 
Technology is advancing at a rapid clip, set against a backdrop of supply chain challenges, inflation coming out of, of course, the two-year pandemic. How do you maintain equilibrium while also ensuring NTN stays ahead of the curve? Um, I think uh, that's an interesting question, Bill. First, we make sure we have the intelligence when it comes to understanding our customer strategies. Every company has their own strategies and goals, but I believe you need to understand the customer strategies and the direction that they're going to go in prior to trying to implement your strategies. I've always had open communications with all my customers, that being internal and external. And, and in this time of the pandemic, uh, Zoom has become a great tool for us in selling and training in the industry. And I think most important is that you have to have efficient forecasting and data gathering in the marketplace. I think you must anticipate they become trends in order to be successful in today's market. And to stay ahead, of course, uh, you got to be number one to market in your mindset and not only with product, but with, with innovation as well. And Charles, as, as you reflect back on your career, what do you consider some of some of your, the career highlights, some of your achievements, some of the things you look back on are especially proud of? Well, um, I mentioned earlier that I started as a territory manager. Uh, I think it goes back to those days when I was awarded uh, Territory Manager of the Year a couple of times when you talk about my personal achievements and things like that. And I think the way I was elevated to uh, in the confidence that uh, the management, uh, the Jim Riches and, and the day pieces of the industry had in me to give me an opportunity to become a sales director at a, at a, at a young age in the industry. But I think my most, the most, my most proud of, proudest achievement to do with my, my people and the, and the teams that I've built. Uh, when I look back now on, on some of the people and how they've excelled under my leadership uh, in the business, not only becoming just regional managers, being sales directors, being VPs within the industry, that, that's what makes me most proud. Terrific. So, Charles, what's on your desk right now? Well, uh, you're probably going to think I'm pretty boring when I tell you what's on my desk. I'm a big believer in organization, and my colleagues will attest to that. I like to be organized with everything. I don't keep a lot on my desk other than uh, the task that I'm working on at the time. Uh, I know and now, nowadays you still have to put out fires throughout the day, but I'm a believer truly that uh, uh, if, you, if you're organized and, uh, and focused, uh, that those fires are limited. So today on my desk, all I have is uh, pretty much my computer, my notes for you today, Bill, uh, is all I keep. I just like to focus on the task at hand at the time. And they say a clean desk is a clear mind, Charles. Yep, that's for sure. So Charles, in your role of Vice President of Automotive Aftermarket, as I understand it, Charles, you have both sales and marketing reporting up to you. Tell us a little bit about your your sales team, your marketing team, and the way and the way you guys are are going to market. Well, I like to start with the marketing team. I've uh, been with NTN now three years, and I could tell you when I first came in, I was totally impressed uh, with the marketing team and the management and and the efforts that Georgia Ann Dickey and her team put in on a day to day basis. And most impressive to me was the awareness of the brand in the marketplace in such a short time. BCA has become a really strong brand out there for the category today. And I, I would just have to say that uh, it would be our marketing team that did the effort, small but mighty, and uh, very aggressive in, in building the brand in the marketplace. Now, when it comes to our sales team, uh, we've taken a hybrid approach to our sales uh, approach in the marketplace. We have corporate salespeople and RMs and territory managers, but we rely heavily on our agencies in the marketplace too, because we felt we needed to get more feet on the street uh, to get to our customers, because we believe it's most important is that customer who's taking the product out of the box. And the only way to take to touch those customers is to have guys on the street day to day and uh, building our brand and talking about our quality and our low warranties in the marketplace. So Charles, you, you've been in the business a long time. You've had a very successful career. What's, what are the big motivators for you, Charles? What gets you up in the morning? 
You know, I, I think over the years, uh, you know, you, you, you always want to focus on work on a day to day basis. You don't really look back to see what's making you go. But now I, I kind of look back and see what makes me what got me to the point I am today and what makes me move forward. And that would that would be my family. I'm very focused on family. Uh, I've got two grandkids now and uh, I bore all my colleagues and all my customers with pictures and stories of my grandkids. So I have to say Kai and Kyrie. Uh, they're my biggest motivators today, and I joke with my son every day, which I love to death. I tell him, you know, you are a great kid, but uh, if I knew it'd be this much fun, I would have had the grandkids first. <laughs> Terrific. So, Charles, uh, NTN is based in Greater Chicago, mm -hmm. and we are going to do something we call the lightning round at AMN Drive Time. And I'm going to okay. give you two, two different things, and you're going to have to make a quick decision about what you are, okay? Okay. Okay. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Summer or winter? Summer, for sure. Bears or Blackhawks? Bears. Cubs or White Sox? White Sox. Best hot dog joint in Chicago? Ooh, boy. Uh, that's a tough one. I'm going to have to go with Portillo's. And P Chicago's known for its pizza, Charles. Best pizza in Chicago? Ooh, boy. There would have to be a local place here called Jimmy's that I like. But uh, I guess if you're thinking of something that everyone would be familiar with, it would be Giordano's. I lived in Chicago, love Giordano's. I don't know your uh, Jimmy's. Charles, mm -hmm. great to have you on AMN Drive Time, sponsored by Lightens. It was my pleasure. This podcast is sponsored by Lightens. Lightens, your best source for OE quality automotive and heavy duty accessory drive tensioning devices. We know tensioners because we invented them.